Stories in games can be told in many ways, and if you plan to make dialogues in your game, there are tools to make it easier. One of them is Arcwith, and we will look at it and how could it help you make your interactive narratives and utilize it in default game engine. Arcwith enable creators to unleash their imagination and introduce interesting world to players with tools to create interactive and immersive narratives. It is a powerful collaborative web design tool allowing you to conveniently create interactive dialogues with intuitive node graphs. You can create elements with text and multiple components describing your lore, for example places, characters or items. Then you can create options for players the connections between the elements. Accessing it from any web browser, you can easily modify any bit whenever you like. You can also organize your story into boards with separate dialog chunks and traverse between them not only in the online editor, but in your game too. Finally, you can also utilize the power of interaction and according to different variables in your project, show different options. There is even a very simple arc script implementation allowing you to inject some basic logic into a flow. Arcwif is battle tested and for example the creators of Lost Paradise utilized Arcwif not only for storytelling flow but also to design mechanics, for example skill trees. Moreover, you can easily export your Arcwif projects into JSON files. Select export and then JSON. You can choose which boards you want to export and if you want to export used assets too. The assets will be downloaded in a zip package. Unpack it and let's try to import it into default using my own module called devarc. Devarc is a JSON parser and a helper module for importing Arc with projects into your default games. It is open source and you can check out the provided examples. There is also a full documentation and API. When you scroll up on its GitHub page, you see a list of releases. Choose one, open it and either download it on your local machine or just copy the link address. Open the new empty default project and go to project settings. Paste the link to the given release of Defarc in dependencies property. Don't forget to save. You can now select project, fetch libraries and default will automatically download all dependencies. So you will see the Defarc module in assets. Let's start with a simple GUI that will display our texts and give options, like a backbone for any dialog prompt in any game. Add a GUI component, let's call it main or whatever you like. And add the first text node. You might notice immediately that there is no font specified for it, but at first you might need to add any. You can for example use the built-in system font for now. Then assign this font to your text node. You can try it out and set some hello world text. Move the node to the center of your GUI layout, save and switch to your main collection. Add an empty game object and attach the created GUI component from the file. It should be displayed immediately when you run your game, so let's check this out. Hello world! Alright, now on to the scripting. Create a GUI script where we will be writing our logic for handling the dialog. Open it. It will be in a new Lua script editor. You can for now remove everything from the template except the first function called init. Let's start with a very simple task. Type gui.setText. You can also use the provided autocomplete list. You see, the function needs two arguments, node and text. We can get the node using the function gui.getNode, where as a parameter we need to provide the unique ID of the node. We can check it out in the GUI, so let's split our view for convenience. Right click on our main GUI and select move to other tab pane. If you haven't yet changed the default ID, you can do so right now. I will call it title. Now use the very same ID in your script. I assigned the given node to a local variable called node, so it is now used in the function below. Now you only need to provide your own text to display. Save it, build it and… Oopsie! We didn't assign the script to our GUI, so nothing happened. It's common, at least for me, so I intentionally wanted you to be aware of this. Let's fix it by changing the GUI script property and selecting your newly created GUI script. Try again and now your own dynamically set text should be displayed. We grasp the basics now, I believe. Let's build it up. Import our defarc module by typing local defarc equals require defarc.defarc in quotes. Why? 
because our actual defarc Lua module is by default in the catalog called defarc. Check it out in the assets pane. Now we can use defarc functions in our script. Start typing defarc.load. This is a function to load the resources exported from Arcwiv. This resource needs to be defined in our game.project file, in the custom resources field. If you haven't yet copied the resources you downloaded from Arcwiv, do it now. Create a new folder in your project, name it assets or something like this, and drag and drop your unzipped Arcwiv project contents from your file explorer directly to a newly created folder in default assets view. Now put the address to the given resource in custom resources. You can type only a catalog to include everything from it, or a specific file, in our case the dialog.json. Copy its relative address and paste it as a string to load this resource using defarc. Now use a function from defarc to get text. You see, it needs an element as an argument, so let's start from an arc with starting element. You can get it from defarc using get starting element id. Put this starting element into the get text function from defarc. Store the given text in a variable too and use it in the set text function below. Let's try if the new text from arcwiv project will appear. Success, it is here, but there is another bug to solve. We didn't break the line in our text node. Get to our GUI to our text node and tick line break property. It will be good to enlarge our node now, so change the size in X axis. Try again to build it now. Better? Alright, let's add the dialog options now. Just clone our text node three more times, but change their IDs to option 1, option 2 and option 3. This will be a simple static list of options to choose from. Rearrange the layout for every node to be visible in our GUI. Now in our script, let's get the text for all three options from Arcwiv project using defarc get options table. We again would need to provide the element, so in this case our starting element, but defarc allows you to select the element and use it by default for all following functions, for convenience. Use defarc select element and use this starting element as an argument. So then you can remove it from the following functions. Now let's displace those options. Start a for loop for all three GUI nodes and set the text for each of them. Get the node ID using the incremented variable i to concatenate to the option string. So this will produce option 1, option 2 and option 3 in each iteration. Do the same to get the option text. But bear in mind that because the Arcwiv project could not have all three options used all the time, it is good to check if options at current iteration is even available. Utilize Lua convenient lazy operations. This will work the same as a simple if-else statement or like a tenary operator from C++. Use this option text to set it to our GUI text node. This is neat but could be better if we put everything responsible for getting and setting the text into a separate function. Let's call it show text and options. Copy the getting and setting the title text inside and add appropriate comment. Do the same to the setting and getting of all three options. You can now replace those parts from your init function with a single call to our new function. I think it's way better now. Let's check if it's still working and options are displayed. It is, but we can't click on any option, so we can't proceed in the dialog. Let's get our inputs to work. Create a special default function for handling inputs called onInput. Inside, write a similar for loop for all three option nodes and in each, get the current node, just like we were doing it earlier. Now add a simple if-else statement where our condition will be a function checking if the given node is picked, meaning if our cursor or touch input is in the boundaries of the node. We will use current actions x and y coordinates that represents the user input in GUI space. Inside, check if we are detecting a pressed or released action with another simple if-else statement. When we actually start pressing the node, we should give some feedback to the user. So, for example, change the scale of the current node. For convenience, but as a simple optimization too. So now I can use those variables in our set scale function. Copy this line to when the user releases the input and set the scale to normal then. As we would like to also take some other actions when the user releases the input over the node, as it's common for any mouse clicks to work on release, we can here select the next element. We get the next element's ID from the options table as a target ID. 
If we have selected the new element, we can update our GUI and display the new text and options. Last thing we need to add is to enable this script to actually receive the inputs from the game engine. We do this by posting a special message to this object and dot is a shorthand for this object here. The message is acquire input focus. Try it and notice that clearly the input is handled because our nodes are reacting to the mouse clicks but we are not proceeding to the next elements in the dialog. This is because we have a bug, again intentional, to show you the error logs where we can quickly see why it is. We are trying to get the options table in line 44 which is not defined as a local variable but... But wait, it was. Yes, but as for the scope of the function that we were writing. You can for example fix it by simply defining the options table local variable in the script scope and removing the local keyword from where it was originally. For the last time in this video, let's build and check out if the dialog is working properly. Enjoy! There are still some more things you should do, like handling logic of the dialog and quitting it for example, but it was just for a seamless beginning. Check out the other examples provided in the DevHark repository or reach me out on forum or social media.